the time there's only one of all the things of all the time there's Using the uh, Zoom recorder, uh, which should give high quality, at, at least as good as the studio, um, as I'm once again uh, roving with my mic, which I usually need to do. I mean, it's it's when I sit in there to mix, I'm there for hours. So I love to be able to get out. So I got this recorder called a Zoom H2N which uh, also acts as an audio interface, which I don't need. I might need with a laptop. But it, um, let's see if I have the right level here. Level. Okay. No, no, I just... Hello, level. 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 Hello. Test. One, two. Test. Test level. Okay, so it's, you know... We just have to, we can't have it up so hot that it clips. Um, so I just spent time going through the past. Well, until I started trying to talk, I didn't realize how bad it was. I hope this clears up. I just realized quite a few things. I, uh, I had a very strange situation coming into the world and then being sequestered and then being let go without knowing what most people know about the world and, you know, being like, in a way, just a lamb to the slaughter. Um, because I thought, you know, before 
We'll put it this way. People spend a lot of money to try to tell me that there is no such thing um, when they saw that I survived murder attempts, which I never attributed to anyone that I knew. I just thought it was a random thing. Never really delved into why. But then when the whole truth came out, and I've worked it back, that, you know, I was not knowing anything to begin with, had trauma um, early in life, and so that kind of split me into a million pieces. Uh, You know, uh, trauma abuse, um, physical abuse, sexual abuse, all that. And at a young age, that where what kids were being indoctrinated to do was to get with it and, you know, go with it. But, you know, I was one, I guess I just hit the wall or whatever. I just, you know, there had been some trauma before it ever got to those uh, rituals, if you like. And, um, you know, the attitude is, this is the world, you know, one big pedophile ritual. You should get with it. This is ubiquitous. This is when in Rome. So this is what people are so afraid of, because, you know, when people try to expose anything, you know, lots of them just disappear, because this particular issue, along with the murder issue... um, and blackmail and criminality, of course, it taints the whole world. And most people have a working knowledge of it because that's what college is for, is to make sure that they, if they didn't get it in high school, that in college they finally get with the program and know their handlers and controllers, know who they, whom they must serve in order to have a life and where they have to go and, you know, to steer them. And this goes to the very fabric, the very fabric of our being, of our nature as humans. No, no, it's not a conspiracy theory, whether it's there or not. It's there. It's interwoven in the fabric of every family on earth. You know, if you're unaware, then you're a lamb to the slaughter. If you're aware, then you're, I guess, a wolf to the feast. I mean... You know, you're, you, you're a, um, a collaborator. You're a criminal. So I realized, and I, you know, it's just going back and seeing people on Facebook. It's on Facebook. Everyone in the world is on Facebook. And um, so there you go. So you run into people you know, from the past and, and, you know, in my filmmaking experiences, I've ran into the people of the past and I realized ah, the disconnect since I kind of woke up in 2000, you know, 2000, Lord took me and opened my eyes, showed me all this, you know, once and for all, I had to believe that it was all real. I had to believe You know, that uh, no more thinking it was this or that or conspiracy. I had to understand and then, you know, have the wrath of people coming after me out in L.A. and leaving. (coughs) And that made made, um, most of the people accomplices. So... It's not like you can go say hello to them. <laughs> I mean, that's my nature to want to want to say hello to them. You know, it's it just it's the most precarious thing because we are, in essence, because I'm in Christ. I have my home and I got my my peeps. I got my place. You know. But before that, there wasn't one. And then, of course, there were quite a few people that thought that was funny watching me bumble about trying to find out what the truth is. Or thinking I was living a normal life when everyone's laughing and saying, ha ha, 
there's a guy that's so far out in left field he doesn't know which end is up but my circumstances were such that I was brainwashed to to be that way it wasn't my fault it wasn't my fault um I mean if they want to laugh it's okay it's I I mean I don't hold any grudge but because it wasn't my fault it's not like I was willfully in the dark I was forced in the dark and so you know that made it impossible I you know had I not had some means of existence I suppose I just would have been a derelict on the street and been dead by now so looking back I realize you know I see people that they see I'm there I see they're there there's no cross referencing cross friends cross there's no hello you know there's this wall and my theory is these people who played this wicked game exploited me for movie ideas or whatever they um, are scared to death of ever being implicated in the things they make you know, horror movies about. I mean, I would love to explain to the, uh, you know, this producer-director guy, I'd love to explain that, you know, as you well know, um, I was just writing about my life and trauma thinking it was fiction because I was split. So you basically took advantage of somebody who was handicapped or crippled. I needed help. But instead, I was exploited. And then, of course, profited from and then laughed at. And it's a big joke. And there was never truth forthcoming. So it's not like there could ever be any, hey, what's going on? Yeah, remember back in the old fraternity days? There were no fraternity days or good old days or it's been one long journey to find out what the truth was, what happened. And long and the short of it is I had been slated for death as a young person and that didn't it didn't happen that way. It didn't happen. So I was locked up and then you know, told that there was no such thing, you know, as the conspiratorial satanic world, but people aren't trying to get me, and it was all my own doing, and, you know, go ahead and go out there and have your life after they switched my mind to being something that wasn't true. And I thought, why are all these people covering it up? Why aren't they talking about this horrible thing that's going on? And it's because they've all accepted it. And they all defend it. Because they believe that they don't want the boat rock because that's where they get their money. So they put up with the elephant in the room. And if you go, wow, there's an elephant in the room, I just have to tell you this. They don't say anything like, yeah, you're right, we know that. Really? Tell me more. And, you know, then they'll try to make a a deal to, you know, sell your soul to the highest bidder. They can become friends with you. So this makes a lot of people just worthless pieces of, you know what, most people. Not everyone's like that. But the majority are. This goes to the prior talks about America. In other words, my life is a microcosm, really says something about America, and why it has to end. You can't... I don't think there's anything worse than um, not telling people the truth and making fun of them and using them because they don't know what you know. And most of these people, when you confront them, you say, do you know that you're responsible for murder? It may be, you know... 
twice removed her by proxy, but your move here and here and here caused the death of that person. Did you know that? In a sense, we could say we all are. Well, do you know there's wars and we pay our taxes, so we're responsible for people getting killed. I mean, you could make that point. But in the satanic realm of things, um, they present themselves as good people, though they know it would be the equivalent of paying someone directly as a mercenary to go kill someone. I mean, it's that much closer than a war. It's a more or less an abstraction. And the reason they don't say anything is because they count on half the population or a tenth or whatever it is on being lambs that they can take to the slaughter. Because when they do that, they boost, they get a treat and a pop and boost themselves. So there's this ongoing marketplace you can never get a straight answer out of them if you have them around. They'll start flattering you and being nice to you and, you know, moving you toward the, uh, the slaughter, ka -ching. They'll do it every time. All they are, and so I ask, well, what is your life? My life is I'll do anything for money. Well, okay, so there's really no point to your life. Why don't you just kill yourself right now? It wouldn't bother me. You made your decision. Further to this, the people that are in that side of things, it's, it's, a, it's a crossing through to the satanic side. It's an allegiance and a lo losing of the soul in exchange for the world. Becoming twice dead, they don't return. So if you go say, hey, what's up? How's it going? Maybe this time things will be different. I used to think that. This time I'm going to be a really nice guy really going to try, really going to try to be friends, really going to try to have not something go off the cliff, have, have it work out. You know, really going to make an effort here. And they'll go the same way. Because if you're going to protect yourself, then you'll end up in a blow up with the person you're being friends with because their intention is for you to go down. Because they need a pop for their career or whatever. You can't fall in that trap. And the Lord was just telling me, you can't write this person. You can't write and explain what happened. They know what happened. They know you didn't deserve that. They know they did wrong. In other words, there can never be justice facing your abuser. And, you know, there's never going to be some you know, moment where you go, gee, you know, I'm sorry, and I'm, you know, I didn't, you know, this was my situation, and they go, well, gosh, I'm really sorry, too. No. No, they're going to keep on with it. Because, and listen to this, they're worried about their kids and grandkids. Little do they know that they have cursed their kids and grandkids who will one day pay for those transgressions. That payment that keeps on paying, it will keep on going into further generations after that. And it's called, widely, the human condition. So what are you talking about? This is just the way it is. Yeah, but see, I have this position. You have that position. I am representing many who couldn't be here today to confront you, to tell you what you've done to so many people that didn't deserve. Uh -huh. Well, better you than me. Not my fault. You're an idiot. Yeah, but it is your responsibility if you play or not. So, a well, thing can't be exposed. You know, the conspiracy bloggers that would put forth the Franklin cover-up Friends, that is BS. It's the world, not Franklin, not, not this one area of some Republican. That's just left-wing propaganda. That's, or it's this group that did 9-11. Or it's that group that is the bankers that are running everything. Wrong. It's the whole population who's involved in it. 
admittedly compartmentalized, but not realizing the part they're playing, but playing fiercely to win anyone else's trauma, misery, or death, be damned. And then they wonder, when karma comes a-knocking, why they just can't be lucky, why they just can't get ahead. Or they'll even try to get around someone who isn't in the game to get the luck off them because they didn't do anything, so maybe they're lucky. (laughs) There's some truth to that, too. I mean, there's some truth to all this. So, you know, and I was looking back and remembering when I go to this this Hollywood screenwriting school because I was having panic attacks during the day. I couldn't go out during the day. So I, I had been trying to finish up a degree and then suddenly I was just taken out. Couldn't I couldn't do it because I got ill, you know, and that with that. And it was really debilitating. I couldn't stand in a line, I couldn't go outside, I couldn't just terrible. But I could get around at night. So I took this screenwriting class, and that eventually led to the schlocky horror movie world. Well, that's fine. You know, most people don't even get that. So it's, and that became a journey in a way of discovery, because the things I would write about inadvertently were things that were true that I didn't believe were true, even though they were, and I'd been through them. How they can do that, or like they're like Nazi brainwashing techniques, they just tell you, they give you a reward, you know, three fingers, not two. You know, eventually you believe it because you get, a, you get to get out of the institution. You get to get on your own. You get to, anyway, whenever I write these scripts, I would get suicidal and triggered and things would happen. It's like, what? And then eventually I had someone say, all that you wrote is true. And I flipped out and eventually all that had to be put back in my mind like, Oh, they just said something stupid. They didn't really mean it. It couldn't be true. People just aren't that evil. You know, it couldn't be true. And, you know, that was back then. And then, you know, I guess the later experience in the late 90s and uh, the, going into uh, the millennium change was visiting all the churches. And just like in the movie-making environment, the church environment, I found to be exactly the same, but only more evil because they were more violent. You know, at least they're threats. And I'm like, well, what... What gives you the right? And it's like, okay, but we all have the right because we all have to police the situation. None of this truth can get out or it blows our whole cover. So that included every major major church in Los Angeles and then every major one in the world and then all the churches worldwide and then all the Christians. And I had this thought, Lord, why are the Christians the most evil? I mean, I'm seeing now how the Christian religion contains the most evil people in the history of man. And that it seems, if you took a surface view, you'd say the most evil religion ever perpetrated upon the earth is Christianity. Now you can make the same case of Islam and Buddhism, all all the religions and everything. Because you see, it's not Christianity. Christianity. It's that the Christianity is irrelevant. Save for Jesus Christ, who you don't need a church to go there. And I've seen recently mind control victims from church. And when you try to have a conversation with them, they go, they go like like when I had DID and all that. They just change their personality. These are like normal people. One of them asked me, well, how are you doing? I said, I'm still traumatized, <laughs> but I'm, at least I know it. And I'm, you know, I'm helped every day through prayer and reflection and having the courage to you know, view the things on earth as you know, real and accept those things as they are. And that's 
one of the reasons we go into trauma because we can't accept. So then they go, well, there's a lot of people traumatized. You'd be surprised, this person said. It was a churchgoer. And I thought, oh, maybe there's hope there. Because to me, the church is simply a murderous environment, whereas if Jesus did show up, and it's, gonna, it's a mystery, his, his coming, some people will never get it. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God it's real. But if he did show up, the church that I refer to, any one of those in L.A. would crucify him because they're violent people. The most violent people in our society seem to gravitate toward those environments. They can beat their wives up. They can, you know, they can uh, sodomize their children without getting in trouble because they're all tied in with the criminality um, of the whole environment. And they're actually the gatekeepers thereof. And many people in power trips, and I hate to put it this way, but there's politicians and law enforcement, all kinds of people that join these churches because it feeds their disease, which is to lord it over other people. And if they don't submit or they don't behave, be violent. It's like, a, it's like an, an innate primitive instinct in people. And... <laughs> when I discovered that the churches murder people, you know, I mean, it's always an accident. There's no investigation. You know, there's, it's just like any kind of political thing. It never comes to light. I thought, wow. They said, don't you understand that if you write a book like Lamb or you talk like this, you know, your people are going to get mad at you and they're going to, and then I said, well, they don't, why would they get mad if you're trying to stop people from hurting innocent people and children and things like that? Why would people get mad at defending youth, defending innocence? Why would people get mad at defending goodness and truth? Why would people get mad and want to kill anyone that comes forward with the truth or with love? Why do they want to kill anyone or anything of virtue of goodness, of righteousness, of something to you know, clean up the mess. And it's because, there's a direct reason, they believe their pocketbooks are tied to the beast. The beast is here, and no one can make war with the beast. Believe me, I'm not going to try to make war with the beast. I have, um, in my lifetime, gotten completely rejected by many and recently by church people but then that's a common thing they always reject after they get to know you a little while when they see you're strong boom they're out the door and they hate you but they know they're not as good as you they know that maybe even their salvation is up for grabs because if they're not doing what you're doing maybe they're going to go to hell and I have news for you. Of course they are. If you, you put it this way, they'll pay for their sins either in this life or in the next. And they'll pay in the form of their children paying. So I'm surveying all the broken lives and all the people out there and I mean, there's some funny ironies I, I wish I could share with you, but I really can't because, you know, some things happen. But, you know, let's just put it this way. When I had my sort of, a, you know, awakening and healing, there are certain people in Hollywood that denounce me as being not having something to do with this or not having done that or just being a hack or, you know, they, they said things that weren't true publicly so that they could be more the author of these projects and that they were really the one who did it and it didn't come from me. And you know what I mean, trying to take the... and also distance themselves from the story that what if this guy comes forth and tells the whole story implicating them as exploiting somebody knowing what the truth was and exploiting them when they were handicapped and had a problem but just exploiting to get a story out of them. 
uh, you know, continuing to be a handler, controller, whatever, that what if they had to face that with their fans? That they really are as much a horror movie as what they're purveying. That they are actually um, an abuser. I mean, it wouldn't be uncommon for people in Hollywood to abuse other people. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not interested in... I have no one more espresso here. Oh, thank you. I've, uh, I've had espresso my whole life. The best thing about Italy... best thing about Italy is uh, my daughter, actually. But then the second best thing would be a couple things, <laughs> you know, espresso and food and wine. Uh, I'm always amazed how people in Italy are always so skinny and they have their fill of wine and song and craziness. So... You know, then, then we jump forward to now. And uh, I've learned lessons. You know, not to tie in with people in the, the world system with my talents. Um, to, you know, I'm, I'm giving them away free. I'm giving myself away completely in my own way. In the only way I could. Being that... Uh, you know, there was sort of, sort of an internal crippling of thing that happened well before I even could make a decision about, you know, just about, about the time I began walking. I mean, you can't blame people for having, you know, the thing not to do is you don't want to kill somebody just because, you know, you hurt them. So now let's kill them. So there's no evidence that I hurt them. Um, no, you, a normal person wouldn't do that. <laughs> These are in families where there's something to hide. And everyone's got something to hide. But I mean, criminal, serious, evil that involves things that you thought were only in the movies. Um, you know, eyes wide shut level stuff. Which was the thing that traumatized me. And that was the thing they kept saying doesn't exist. And that eyes wide shut reality that I had seen, and then they were... You, you know, you must become part of it in order for them to uh, allow you to live or whatever. Or pay a price. My brother was uh, killed, murdered. I think that was price enough. My life was ruined. I think that was price enough. And so who's going to believe this derelict anyway? They can just laugh at him, make him a laughing stock, use him for ideas push him around, assign wives and friends to him, assign little lifestyles to him, and maybe mess with him, poison the food, you know, but whatever it is, it's them, us, right? You and them, them and you. It's never us. But it's a pretend game, a con game. And that's basically what I had, you know, and it was, I'm looking at it now and saying, oh my gosh, Lord, you really helped me to survive because they were, you know, literally seething, you know, at the gate all these years, you know, steering me one way and steering me another out of harm's way into, you know, into the grace of God, into the safety zone, into away from, you know, something waiting to clobber me, you know, came close 2010. I was poisoned. We found out who the perpetrator was. Her name was Rosa. She was a in the end, I believe she, uh, the way that she did it, and they did it, it was not just her, but other people. Uh, and she was uh, my mother's caregiver, but for her generationally. And they would put bugs in the food, which can cause cancer and, you know, permanent disabilities in order, you know, to, I don't know, you know, whatever. That's just, you know, Santeria um, witch. And then, you know, warlock and sorcerers as well. And, 
you think they're your friend and you know you eat the chicken soup they give you and then you're sick and you, you go oh, what did i just do well but the thing that they usually put in food is something that hits you six months later so that happened several times so it was still on and the motive is always the same m-o-n-e-y um I think that person fled the scene because she felt that when I figured it all out, I'd come back and kill her. Which, of course, I wouldn't do. I forgive. See, my motivation was to find out, well, what is all this? So further education, 2010 and 2011, culminating at my daughter's birthday, 2011, um, August 21st, was the final understanding so it's been a little over a year since having the whole story all pieced together I mean there's a lot of stuff that I did not go into and I think before my mother died she felt that I didn't know anything so I didn't know anything about all the you know the rituals done at the house and the amount of uh, I mean there was one incident where the House was for sale that she had. And the people next door came over and said, yeah, we remember all these nude girls walking around the pool. <laughs> and they, oh, they were all underage. Yep. Yep, own it. A woman's burning in hell. But that's the bottom line. And that, a fairly recent recollection. I mean, even that was... Similar to uh, what I was told back when I had written the script by someone who worked there. And then I wrote a script and she was working for the casting director and said, everything in that script is true. And that flipped me out. Well, I learned it again from the next door neighbor. Yes, it's an ongoing litany of Satanism. Unbridled. And with numerous orders from my own mother to kill me, telling her maid and other people to spike the food, do what you have to do to get rid of him. And this went on in one form or another for my entire life. Even sending people out here to get a house and pretend they're married. And, you know, it's always the same thing to lead you to death. Then that's the bottom line. It's either death, you know, and, uh, you know, or if there's some miracle and you could join them, but you'd have to accept, uh, you know, killing, you know, it's lying. Eh, I don't know. Probably it's just easier to bump you off. So that's been the, that is the world. It involves, uh, all of us are involved in it in one way or another. All of us, not the Franklin cover up, not the Rosemary's baby. Well, Rosemary's baby never said it wasn't everyone. It was trying to show how it was the guy, the baker, the, it's everyone. You will either stand for the truth and for, you know, and try, well, in my case, I didn't know there was protection on me. And looking back, of course, there had to have been because the odds are billions to one against my being a survivor. So, yes, I survived so I could bring you this message today to say, don't believe those conspiracy theories. A lot of those are the perps trying to cover up the real truth. They'll say it's the Illuminati or the Vatican or it's the Jews or the serpent seed or this. Don't believe it. It's everyone. It's everything. It comes down to each soul and what they decide to do or not do in this life. And everyone's presented with the opportunity to defend the truth and goodness or sell out and defend evil and murder and crime. And it's just basically that. And, you know, they uh, will allow... um, Oh, just what did I hear this? Uh, um, they use Stalin 
you know, use starvation as a tool and economic bad times to, to make the people conform for crumbs. Now we jump to Obama. He's the same kind of person. He would like you to beg for the crumbs. That's why I think you see New York is an experiment. In other words, starve them enough and they'll do just about anything or agree to anything. And that's the kind of horrible situation you have. You see, the people that thought it was just some kind of game, an amorphous game, now they're faced with being beaten down themselves. And they're like, well, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. I'll just bow down like I always do. But bowing down is not exactly it. That's not enough. No, you see, this time it's a new game. And most people in the United States who sold out to Satan will be killed. If the purge goes all the way to the bank, if there is no check to stop it, if nothing stops the purge that's going on now, it will eventually get down into the starving people of whatever community. And as you can see, in New York City, not only not Bloomberg, but Obama, who did this photo op with Christie, does not give a damn. In fact, no one is really helping to move this thing along because they're trying to get them down, you know, get them, push, you know, that, that lifestyle they had out. And, you know, without understanding this, You know, it takes a nasty turn when it's Soviet Russia or when it's New York City after the... And yes, the, the tax scheme of the carbon and climate change and all that, it's all thuggery. It's all theft. The whole point of it all is to eventually confiscate all private property, kill all the bourgeoisie, own it all themselves, and to hell with everybody else. No conscience, no thought. Now, that's the world. Not just the Franklin cover-up. And of course... What goes along with that is any kind of perversion you can imagine. Okay, so, and of course, it's all dedicated to Lucifer, as it says in the book of Saul Alinsky, Rules for Radicals. And so now, my understanding went from the, my own experience, broadening to understand the truth, because I had to make a pact with myself. I wouldn't turn away. I wouldn't let myself get multiplicity or DID'd or whatever just because I couldn't handle that yes it's just as bad as I say I used to get people criticizing me about talking about churches and things not a peep not a word when someone says well I'm working with this church group or that church we're playing at this place or that um, if they want me to act if they want me to act like it's uh, everything's everything, if they want me to behave, um, if they want me to behave like it doesn't matter, All right, continuing on. So, people get scared. They think, well, I don't want to throw my life away. So I'm going to serve goodness and life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness, and look the other way on these things I can't change, the corruption, make my best deal and go forward having bowed down to the right groups of people and gone through the right channels, I can now have a life so long as I keep my mouth shut. And anyone that needs policing out there who is like a loose cannon talking about this whole conspiracy, we will just silence them on behalf of the real rulers so that we can continue to prosper. <laughs> and now, at long last... That whole prospect is obsolete.
you see, Satan eventually comes to collect. God allows that collection. When collection doesn't mean life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. The collection means your ticket's punched, it's over. Whether it be nationally, internationally, globally, or with a single person. At some point, you reap what you sow. And I know we're all sinners. We all are capable of doing of being the worst. You know, but our deeds matter in the sense that what we do and what we think comes back. And when you think awful thoughts and perverse thoughts and hateful thoughts especially, even if you don't act on them, they come back. So you gotta let it go. Once I really pieced it all together, and of course the people thought that was hilarious, me piecing it together, but what is a person to do? No. What would you have done if you were me? Uh, because there was no peace without finding out the truth, and there'd be no Jesus Christ without understanding the need for salvation, and the fact that all souls here are perishing, and few that are saved or brought to the narrow path of salvation, which a lot of people think is a behavioral thing. In other words, be a goody two-shoes, but that's not it. That's, that's you know, the flesh is already seen as evil, and our best deeds on our best day is considered to be not good enough because we're in a fallen world. And so good deeds, while they're... Laudable, and it's nice when people feed the poor and do good things. If it's in the context of trying to get uh, balance out the evil that you're doing or affiliated with by doing good things, then it's no good. It's no good unless everyone just stops. Now, so here we are today, and I'm just saying the message to the world is that if the world doesn't stop in the direction it's going presently, Many won't be around to be able to make amends or speak the truth. And I see a whole generation of people who are lying to the earlier generation. You know, uh, Solomon did not lie to his son in Proverbs. No, he was honest. But I see a whole generation lying to the next one, getting them ready to take up the mantle You know, man is good, achievement counts, be a winner, not a loser. To be a winner um, requires, obviously, uh, uh, a compromise that is untenable with sanity in the end, with life in the end. It's actually anti-life, anti-Christ, which is anti-knowing, um, which is ignorance. And this Antichrist spirit that has gone through the whole world and every person, the vote seems to be in and the people have voted for more of the same. In other words, no one is going to just lay it out. Now the Bible lays it out, but then it's ridiculed as being some fake document by people that don't read it. Little do they know that the truth is written there, but the churches and teachers tend to make it more secular or cover up the truth that it has meaning for each person, which is, and challenges each person to basically, within their guts and in their soul, comes down to the individual, which, what will you choose this day? If you choose Jesus and salvation, then you choose to tell the truth then you're going to live via the truth. You know, we know the evil is out there. We know it's part of everything, but you must be separate and sanctified by holiness, Jesus, in order to then stand and then be furthermore protected from the ravenous wolves or, you know, you wouldn't exist. Most people don't agree to that. They remain themselves traumatized and I my theory now is that most of these people that think they know something are themselves 
multiple personalities and DID because I watch them switch when I confront them. I see them switch and start laughing and say, oh, we don't really need to talk about that or whatever, some, some kind of thing. But I see them switch into actually believing, like I had done, that nothing like that exists uh, until it does. <laughs> so the trick of being able to, to move through these waters and live as an intact human being um, this seems to be the real, almost an impossibility for people to do because they keep, through fear and through um, the threat of hunger, starvation, all that, the kind of thing that you'll see more overtly politically when they pull the uh, entitlement, um, I'd still no guarantee you'll live. But I mean, in order to live, then they have to play along and behave as if nothing's going on. Well, that means that there's a trauma and a split right there. So, in my own discovery of it, of the truth, it took, you know, knowing the truth and not being able to deal with it in youth, and then, I don't know, 30 years or something of kind of like scientifically trying to piece it together piece by piece to try to get to the truth of what was going on. In other words, why would people act one way, you know, and then you'd see them again, and they'd be all like mind-controlled and satanic, and then you'd see them again, and they're all normal and intact. What is that thing that takes over? You know, and, and people say it's a demonic spirit, but psychologically what happens? Psychologically, they would be split. So they would switch and then switch back. And that would be, if a psychiatrist saw that, they would say that is DID or dissociative identity disorder, then that would be a disease the entire world has right now. To focus on someone that says they're a multiple because of sexual abuse or whatever in youth is to miss the whole picture. Now, the perpetrators are multiples. Or they couldn't do it. They couldn't lie or do the things they do unless they had that same spirit, which is what it really is, causing a manifestation that would appear to psychiatry as a split in one's personality. So I experienced this split first in my friends and my parents and their friends, and I wondered what that was. The answer was, you're... Uh, messed up, you need help. That was the answer across the board. Truthfully, looking back on it, I needed help like called support. That when, when a, if a child sees the truth, not to say you didn't see that and then beat them nearly to death, that wouldn't be the right approach. It'd be like, yes, that's the truth. So, I don't feel, you know, someone the other day said, you know, it was heartbreaking, your testimony of your childhood and things like that. And I was like, eh, no, it's not as heartbreaking as seeing what happened to Christopher Stevens, our ambassador in, uh, in Benghazi. Um, that, that was abuse, then death. Uh, no, not as bad as that. So, no, I don't feel... You know, in a sense, I did survive and, and barely at times, you know, to, uh, but most of you and the whole world, and I'll just say this, is in a sense surviving this thing. In a sense, you've had it just as bad as me. You just didn't know it. I mean, just as bad or good. I didn't really have it bad uh, economically. I had it, there was the, the realm of the Satanist that was the bad thing, and it would have been good, meaning supportive, had I been different. So, you know, had my personality or my makeup or my me as a person not been the person that I am, I was intact then. My reaction of outrage was perfectly normal. 
my need to find the truth was completely 100% human and normal. My not dealing with the truth was understandable, not being able to or being crippled by it for a while, but my finally coming to grips with it all and understanding it all was human and normal. Denial and split personalities, as most people that I've met have, um, was not the right answer. You know, uh, living in denial, what they do, it's justifying themselves that it's really not that bad. I'm really am a good person. And then they go to work and they keep going with their lives and awaiting the next time that something takes them over that they have no control over because they gave themselves to it at some point and have never been able to get free since. At the same time, no matter who you are or what side of this equation you're on, you're afflicted. They try to take over. They will take over with sin, whether it be pornography or any kind of lust issue or greed or lying or anything like that or being mean. Um, you know, and then you wonder, why did I do that? Or, you know, there was that point. Now, the, the person who's intact will say, you know what? I can do better than that. And I weakened myself over here and that allowed that to come in and take over. I'm going to work harder so that doesn't happen next time. That's good. That's a good person. Admitting the mistake. But once they confess the real truth to their pastor, to their rabbi, to anybody, to their psychologist, they are then handled and controlled by someone who's being handled right at that moment to not go any further than it's their own personal fault and not a world phenomenon. Come on, we need to do the best we can with what we've got, don't we? You know, this is the way it is. You can't fight it, so do the best you can. Not good enough because our children are at stake. If you have a conscience at all, then you can't really go there because you want to do the best for your children. Just initiating them into the same thing that afflicted you and telling them to go with it, that's not the answer. That's the answer for destruction. So now I contend that any sensitive child coming up who, 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 who this reality is laid on, uh, the satanic global you know, grip, um, many who can't handle it have unfortunately not with us because they couldn't you know they'll take it on themselves and commit suicide or whatever but it's as much a human sacrifice as if they drew, drew if is if they push the dagger or shove the pills down the throat anyway it's as much a murder as any other murder and then now we see the political cover-up and a terrible example set by the liar obama who does nothing but lie and this is the example for the kids who are now on twitter and they're continuing the same bad behavior because he's their leader. So you reap what you sow, America and the world. Obama is your answer. Um, and he demands, and this, this new game, the new boss actually demands worship. It goes a little further than just bowing down. And he wants something that you desperately really don't want to lose or even if you... You're wondering if you've lost it, but they're going to make sure you've lost it because the day that chip comes to prove you've got Obamacare or whatever else, just remember in the book of Revelation that anyone with that is written out of the Lamb's Book of Life forever. If that, if that in fact, is the fulfillment of the prophecy. I don't know why John on Patmos would have, or, uh, you know, would have come up with... Uh, any other scenario, um, you know, unless you had a very fertile imagination because nothing like that would exist back in that day. And he didn't seem to me to be some visionary sci-fi writer. <laughs> you know. So, I think God is speaking to us down through the ages and just saying, okay, look, here's what you got to do. Once you deliver it out, there is no going back. Just like I can't go say, hey, what's going on? You know, and they, they're scared to death of saying anything to me because they realize that I'm going to go right back in their face with the truth, which would unravel them. 
I'll say, you know what, back then, this is what was going on and this was the part you played in it. And I forgive you. I just want you to know that it's seen. We know what happened. Right? Or the gang stalking. We know you were part of that. Yeah, we know we're not friends. But we also know that you would like to be friends. In other words, we know that you really don't want to defend the side you're on. But when you look at the world and the economics of it, do you tell your kids, well, sell out all the more, you know, because it's tougher now. So you're going to have to do more evil in order to have a decent life. You're going to tell your kid that, really? Because what you reap, what you sow, you'll, you, what you reap is what you've sown. If you sow that, you reap the whirlwind. You reap nothing but death and destruction. For example, the thing you see socially coming upon us now, that's what's being reaped. By You can tell what the people have been up to by looking at their nation or the Western world, and you can see what's happened. So what it is is, no, it's not because they're voting for socialism. It's not because they want a handout. It's because they've been conditioned that the way of the world that they've been secretive about is going mainstream. What are they going to do? Something they never thought would happen. Something they never wanted to contend with. And I would say... And no, you know, I don't want to paint myself as purely innocent in all this stuff of my own journey of discovery because I was plenty selfish and sinful along the way. It's just that I really just refuse to believe that there could be anything like a satanic system that simply kills to keep itself a secret. And that, you know, when... How could it be a secret if everyone's in on it? And that, that, whole, that whole problem, that whole mathematics of that has really uh, finally got me to understand. The mystery is it's consciousness of humanity. It's all people in every city, in every spot on the globe at all times. The division and the split is between you know, the winners and losers, lambs and wolves, you know, sheep and goats. And it's the same split worldwide, even on remote islands that have no contact with, you know, the Bible or anybody else. Same system goes on. And so the people of, of the world, they think, well, we're being world savvy. We're smart. We know how the world works. We know how to get along with it. So we know how to we're able to feed our families and do our thing. And no, you're not. See, you were, you only thought you could do that. Tell that to the people out of work now. They're willing to bow down to anybody and no one will give them a dime. You see, they could heap fetuses or virgins upon the fire all they want. Just like the Aztecs. Same thing happened in, in Mel Gibson's Apocalypto. He tried to explain this symbolically through that story, allegorically. But people didn't understand it. They just attacked Mel. Stanley Kubrick tried to explain it through Eyes Wide Shut. He wound up dead. And on and on and on. And some of that's supernatural. You know, in other words, there's huge forces and higher principalities that are above and beyond human that control all this. And I wouldn't, you know, I don't want to leave out that during that time where I was fighting with the devil in my youth, which people thought was hilarious, there were the UFOs and all the, the aliens had the grip of all these people. They were all involved, entwined with, you know, sexual abuse of children, UFOs, psychiatry. It was all kind of interlaced. All interlaced. So it kind of goes to what Jonathan Kleck talks about, about that split in humanity to be a fit extension for them to use, absolutely. That's the split. You know, psychiatry can say all at once, DID, these are terms, it just really means being taken over by something not you. 
and used. So, you know, Facebook, how strange. As I predicted one time that everyone's going to wind up on Facebook in the end. You could talk to anyone. Anyone you've ever wanted to talk to, past, present, future, old, all your old acquaintances from high school, all the people that, that hurt you, all the people you've kind of, um, you know, well, they won't talk to you if you're in Christ and you've healed and you've forgiven them. They're going to stay as far away from you as possible because your presence convicts them, makes them feel guilty, destroys their confidence in themselves. So they stay away. They stay away. And you can't, as a good friend told me, this friend said, and I quote, I found that you can't go back in, in, with regards to reunions, getting together with old friends. There's no going back. You can see them. You may have things to say. You might want to set the record straight. But I was shown there is, they're never going to give you a break. They're never going to accept your view because it would, because it would damn their view that you are the problem and they're the good guy. And that's, it's just never going to be different than that. If there's a conflict and someone's understanding about an event or a thing that happened, it's never going to go your way. They may be very happy. Oh, I'm glad you stopped by. Then they'll put the whole conversation to the side, not mention it, and want to get into chit-chat. That's what they'll do if they're going to scam you. And that's something you ought to avoid. Because while they're doing that, they're throwing, <laughs> they're throwing spirits at you. Yeah, they're trying to get control of you. You know, trying to, oh, maybe there's still a way to work this thing. Because they prey on human flesh, on human souls. Not them, but what's in them is praying, you know. It's all about the soul. So they, they, can, they only have one knob, on or off. When they're on, they're going after the next soul. That's how they're getting their... That's how they're getting their next... That's their job. So it just becomes really painfully clear... When you see Obama wanting revenge, you know, vengeance is Satan. You know, he wants revenge on humanity that would think for itself and not bow down. And, you know, he just, it's just all about that. And all the minions and sycophants, they're like, yes, master, yes, sir, let's kill them. And that's how you had the communist revolution. You had all, all these movements throughout time have been that kind of thing. They turn on their own people. Um, forget about how much of a traitor. You know, he's symbolic of the whole generation of these people. But forget about how much of a traitor, how evil, how backwards, how disloyal, how life negating something, you know, how disease, he's like a disease, not even a human. I mean, just how horrible that is. And then realize that from their perspective, you are that very thing that you just described. And some people have even gone so far as to say, all humanity should be taken out. And if I could release a virus that would do it, I would do it right now. So there's even that. And that would be vengeance for having hurt the earth or some cockamamie thing like that. No, I'm not dealing with you right now. A little bit later. A little bit later. Come on. Come on. Say hello. Anyway, once again, the testimony flows out from the micro to the macro, stating the exact same truth again from various perspectives, but saying the one solid gestalt type truth, which is not divisible. The one truth, always in the end, these talks will lead to the one, you know, no matter where you begin, whether it's your life or the example of someone else's life or someone else's life, it all comes down to the one truth. You know, the one understanding that we have of the world and by their silence, 
yeah, their unwillingness to acknowledge that you say the truth, you know what side they're on. And you know, right off the bat, they need help because if they continue in the direction they're going, not only next, you know, after death, but on the way to this nation, for example, will go through trials and tribulations unlike the world has ever seen. And that's what's up. And the people are too set in their ways. And they're, but because they occupy the churches, they think, oh, well, God's not. They might even think that there's a blessing here. The thing you see today that's happened is a direct response to the churches that we of heaven, we of the kingdom, we of the kingdom of God, we of this dimension, see what you've done, and this is our response. Therefore, let the whole world know that you failed. Church. Bible teachers. Conspiracy uh, theorists. And then who do it in the name of Jesus. All that, you know, Nephilim obsessors. Uh, and so on and so forth. It's the Vatican. It's the Jews. It's the skull and bones. It's this, it's that. No, friends, it's everything and everyone. And it's been like that from the beginning of time. And yes, it is going to change. You're making yourself known here, huh, Lassie? You, she wants butter, you think? I, I keep forgetting that. Of course I knew that. Okay, let's give her some butter. There you go. She likes that. I think they like some cream. <laughs> oh, this is all about being petted and interrupting. Well, I was about done anyway. I just found it interesting how I had stumbled across people on Facebook from the past. How bizarre of a journey. And then I realized, you know, the Lord was speaking to me at the time, saying, you see this? You know, don't bother trying to, you know, set the record straight now. You know, they, they know what the record is. It's, they had to lie. You, their whole lives are built on a lie. They just hope the train keeps going. Well, let this be a testimony to the harbinger of the end. For all the holy angels... All the hosts of heaven, the Ancient of Days, Yahweh Elohim and all the creatures around the throne, and all the vehicles of the angelic realm, and all their chariots, and all their and all of their attention is steadfastly on this situation and on every single living human on earth with the ability to start or stop any plan of the wicked, any day of the week, any time. That's why you can never just say, oh, it's all this or all that. Now, I believe America was already spoken for, but that doesn't mean that every event is. America went the way of the obelisk. The obelisk worldwide, in every civilization it's been shown to be in, has collapsed. Period. Same thing will happen to Israel if they keep theirs there at their uh, Knesset. Boom, gone. What ties them all together, Catholics and Jews and Protestants and atheists, is the, uh, the abominable uh, architecture that's populated the world that says, Satan is our God and there is no other. Let us be secret, but put it out in plain sight for all to see so they don't have, they are none the wiser. That this is our belief, these are our intentions, this is the God we serve, and you can see we become a powerful nation because of the reward from this one, not Yahweh. And if you like, we'll call Satan Yahweh just to trick you. Anyway, no one knows the name of God. Thank God. 
<laughs> We'd hate to see that blasphemed, wouldn't we? There's a good reason why no one knows the name, because it can't be uttered, so they can't blaspheme it. <laughs> yeah, well, they're too stupid to actually figure that out, but that's cool. They think they know everything, and that's, that's wonderful. I'm glad they think they know everything. I held a bunch of things back from my own family because I didn't want them to know that I knew. St- so I just acted stupid a lot of the time because I realized there was a danger in knowing things and then being disagreeable. I'm like, you people think you're free? You go to your little clubs and you follow your little rules and you go to your universities and you get your degrees and you move to the suburbs and you do your whole thing. You think you're... You think your world is impenetrable? You think your system is, is that you won't reap what you sow? You think that the way you behaved will ensure your children's prosperity and their health and goodness and learning and all the things we're supposed to be doing here? You think that's going to help with that? There's no amount of money No amount of armies, no amount of weapons, no amount of clubs, no amount of guilds or secret societies that keeps Yahweh, the holy angels, and everyone from acting upon it and acting upon every individual within it. There is no protection from the Lord. There may be from Satan... That is, the Lord is protection, but there is no protection from the Lord. Every single thing that's been done, every putrid thing that they would be so embarrassed if it was on video, will be seen by the elect on a huge video screen. It'll be like 3D. It'll be like reliving it. It'll be reviewed. It already is being reviewed. There's a lot of things that I would be embarrassed if it was reviewed, you bet. And I just have to repent and say, I'm sorry I did those things. The difference is repenting versus being proud. I'm not proud of a lot of the things. Even though it may be understandable that because this or that happened to me, then this or that I I end up doing too. You know, I'm sorry. It doesn't make it right. It just means I'm embarrassed about that. At the same time, I don't want to go out and do a bunch of external good deeds so that I think I'm going to weigh the balance that way. That's more antichrist than antichrist. You know, it's just a giving up. I'm not worthy, Lord, and I'm no good in this flesh. And you are, please take me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Wash me in your blood, Jesus Christ, this day. I believe you came, that you'll come again. Your established will reign forever and ever. I believe that you are the only solution to the psychological trauma of the world. You are the only way to peace and to a sound mind, Father. You are the only way to a a good result. I've heard so many testimonies where children had their whole families killed by Muslims and came to be pastors and evangelists and things. You know, stories like that or where the body was ravaged with cancer but through prayer came back. All kinds of things I hear what the Lord is doing. And maybe this will be the thing we have to focus on. You know, I don't want... I'm not here to, to spew negativity or to attack anyone. At the same time, I'm not going to be a shrinking violet and run from the truth. If someone starts to put one over on me, I'm not going to back back off. You know, I'm not. I'm just going to say, you know, why so silent? You know, when Christians play games against each other and try to set each other up, rather than just dodging the bullet, one should go back in their face and say you know what I saw what you did and you better repent because you're you're no brother of mine not yet anyway or maybe you were but you lost your way very rarely I mean it's I could count it on one hand 
have I gotten an apology? And the Lord told me today, he said, these will not have understanding. They will try to be nice to you. They will say, oh yeah, good times. They will look for an angle to manipulate. It's what they always do. And just got to know that. In the name of Jesus, I bid you shalom, shalom. And uh, may you be at peace as I am at peace today. May you also be at peace. Not only peace, but I'm ecstatic. May you also be ecstatic. Being ecstatic in the face of these grave dangers that we face in the world today, that's a mighty great place to be, and it's a lot better than worrying and biting your fingernails. I'll see you next time. Mm